Hi, precious people. I am delighted for this once again wonderful uh, moment which God has granted me to share the word of God with us. Welcome to this study whereby we are focusing on the book of Osea. For those who are new, we have found out that Osea comes from the word Yeshua, which means Savior. It bears the same evil word as that of Jesus, that is Yeshua. Osea was one of the minor prophets whom God called to minister to his people, Israel. That is now the northern kingdom, which constituted of ten tribes of Israel. For those who are new in the history of Israelite, is that uh, after Solomon died, his son Roboam uh, was not able to maintain the kingdom. And what happened is that uh, out of his own stupidity, the kingdom broke and he was left with only two tribes. The ten tribes uh, went under Jeroboam and they became the northern kingdom, which was commonly known as Israel from that time henceforth. And the southern kingdom was known as Judah, which was under the leadership of the lineage of David. So the northern kingdom uh, was the one which God sent this minor prophet by the name of Seah to address. And what happened is that uh, this northern kingdom and the ten tribes, they, they drew the leader of Je Jeroboam. They set up the altars there the images, and they started worshipping them, seeing that they were their God who had brought them out of the land of captivity, that is Egypt. So as a result now, from that time on, Israel broke the covenant, and this prophet, God called him so that he could change them of their sins, hoping that uh, God had the intention that they would understand where they had fallen, and they would acknowledge their sins, and they would come back to God, although they didn't, as we are going to see. So we are now in Hosea chapter 7, verses 1 to 16. Whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed, and the crimes of Samaria revealed. They practice deceit, thieves break into houses, bandits rob in the street, but they do not realize that I remember all their evil deeds. Their sins engulf them. They are always before me. They delight the king with their wickedness, the princess with their lies. They are all adulterers, burning like an oven, whose fire the baker need not stir. From the kneading of the door till it rises, on the day of the festival of our king, the princess become inflamed with wine and enjoins hands with the mockers. Their hearts are like an oven. They approach him with intrude. Their passion smunders all night. In the morning, it blazes like a flaming fire. All of them are out as an oven. They devour their rulers, all their kings fall, and none of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes with the nations. Ephraim is a flat cake, not taken over. Foreigners serve his strength, but he does not realize it. His air is sprinkled with the gray, but he does not notice. Israel's arrogance testifies against him, but despite all this, he does not return to the Lord his God or search for him. Ephraim is like a dove. Easily deceived and senseless. Now calling to Egypt, now turning to Assyria. When they go, I will throw my net over them. I will pull them down like bands of air. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. All unto them, because they have strayed from me. Distraction to them, because they have rebelled against me. I, I long to redeem them. 
but they speak lies against me. They do not cry out to me from their hearts, but wail upon their bands. They gather together for grain and new wine, but turn away from me. I trained them and strengthened them, but they plot evil against me. They do not turn to, to, the, to the most eye. They are like a faulty bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword because of their insolent ones. For this, they will be ridiculed in the land of Egypt. So shall we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive your one this moment with thanksgiving. We acknowledge that, Father, we need your help, and we are grateful that already you are provided Europa, who is your Holy Spirit. Even Job, our Father, as we interact with your word, O oh God, we are ready to learn from you. We pray that, Father, you are going to give us the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge which comes from above. And most importantly, O oh God, after understanding your word, may we receive it with thanksgiving, may we localize it, may we run with it, and the Father, give us grace even to put it into practice, O oh God. As we learn from your interaction with your people Israelite, may we understand that Jehovah Father, the same way you're interacting with them, the same way you had so many challenges against them, that is how you are changing our society today. May we not be like them, but Father, may we be willing to learn and to hear you, O oh Father. When you speak, may we, O oh Lord, listen. When you correct us, O oh Father, may we be willing to obey the correction. Because we know, O oh Father, it is out of your love. That Job, our Father, you correct us, O oh Lord. Blessed be your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Bless each and every person who shall hear your word, O oh God. May that word have an impact in their lives. That, Father, we shall draw closer to you because you are our God and you have lifted your word above your name. We acknowledge the fact that, Father, you are one is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you are one will remain forever. That's why we take your one seriously in the name of Jesus. Give us freedom, O Lord, from your word. That, Father, you may sanctify us by your truth. Your word is the truth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hosea chapter 7, it is a continuation of Hosea chapter 6, whereby we have found out that... Uh, Israelite didn't turn away from their disobedience, regardless of God warning them and, and telling them in black and white where they had fallen. Their sins had been clearly shown to them, yet they continued to rebel. So, Hosea chapter 7, we are going to see God again and again changing them. Verse 1 says, Whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed, and the crimes of Samaria revealed. They practice deceit, this break into houses, bandit rob in the street. So, Hosea chapter 1, or chapter 7, verses 1, it gives the three terms which refer to the same uh, thing. That is the northern king. So, the three terms, that is Israel, Ephraim, and Samaria, they refer to the same thing. The northern kingdom, which constituted of the ten tribes of Israel. Verse 1 tells us that. So, God was in desiring to restore them, but they continued rebelling. And here, their sins are, were exposed. They had become practitioners of deceit. There was no truth in them. Their People were not comfortable. People were not satisfied. They were stealing from one another. They were breaking the houses of other people. There were even bandits who were robbing in the street. And I believe even now in our society, God desires to heal our families. God desires to heal our countries. God desires to heal our continent. God desires to heal the whole world. But when God comes to heal us, we continue to, to rebel. Consequently, the suffering we see, the society facing today. Not that our God is not able to save us, not that God is not hearing us, but it is our rebellion which continues to affect us. Oh, I pray to us that we shall learn from our brothers Israel 
and we are going to humble ourselves before God. And when we humble ourselves before the Lord, God is faithful, He is going to hear us. Because when we look at our society, it is characterized with indecent. There is no truth in the people today, whether at home level, whether in businesses, whether in families, whether in institutions. Many people have decided to propagate the kingdom of the darkness, who is the father of all liars. Others are stealing in your manner of, of vagary. They are bandit all over. So those are the kind of, of, of changes which God changed our brothers Israelite. And we can see the same sin of rebellion. It is continuing in our society today. Verse 2 says, But they do not realize that I remember all their evil deeds. So, one thing here which is very clear and very critical for us to observe is that God remembers all our deeds. Actually, there is even a book of remembrance. When we read in the book of Revelation, there is a book of remembrance which is written. There are two books. So, God remembers everything that we do. So, my dear friend, wherever you are, Understand that God remembers whatever you do and he sees it. Actually, everything is naked before the Lord. Whatever you do, understand that there is somebody who is seeing. That is God. Whether you are doing it in secret, whether you are scheming anything, God is observing everything which you do and he remembers. And it is written in your book. To our brothers, Israelites, they forgot that God remembers. And they thought that God had become like them. And at times even us, we think that God is like us. We fail to recognize that everything which we do, God remembers and they are naked before him. So I believe this principle of us realizing that God remembers everything, it is very important when it comes to our dealings with one another and even when we are dealing with our maker. Actually, I like to put it this way that uh, whenever we want to do something, we should never bother to look around, but we always should look within. Because when we look within and see God, then we will realize that uh, God is there and we, he, is, he is seeing everything. God is everywhere. Our brothers have forgotten that fact that God is omnipresent. God is everywhere and he remembers. So in the book of Revelation, we are told there are, there are two books which will open, be opened, the book of Remembrance, the book which is written, the, those who will enter in the life, the internal life, and the others who will have no life, who have rejected the Savior. So my prayer is that all of us will accept the Savior so that even when the book of Remembrance is opened, we are going to be remembered. There are evil deeds, there are sins and engulf them, they are always before me. So, anything which we carry on, it is always before the Lord. One thing which can take these sins away from the Lord, it is when we acknowledge the Savior. When we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and the Savior, then our, our sins are wiped away, our sins are blotted, and God does not remember them. But as long as we have not acknowledged our Savior, our sins will always be before the Lord. No activity can take away our sins. From the presence of God. No activity can make to assess God the Father except the activities which was done by Himself by providing the Savior, the Redeemer, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Our brothers, Israelites, the northern kingdom, they were so much sealers, committed, dedicated in burnt offering, in ratios, but without God. Consequently, they thought they would appease God with them, but it turned out to be as near to them. Uh, so sin is a dangerous thing. Actually, the wages of sin is death. Even as we find in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the wages of sin is death. It is the one which separates us from the love of God. Even Isaiah chapter 59 says that uh, the heel of the Lord are an urban dump, nor is hands shorter to hear us no is ears damp, no is answer to hear and to hear of us. But our sins are the ones which separate us from God. So God is so loving, he is so caring, 
and he is willing to help us. Verse 3 says, They delight the king with their wickedness, the princess with their lies. So both the countrymen, both the leaders, both the princes, all of them, and they turn to wickedness. They are turned from God. Actually, it is the leaders who lend the people into sinning, into breaking the covenant. And as a result now, God would correct all of them, even as we are going to see. They are all under terrace, burning like an oven, who, whose fire the bay can eat not stir from the kneading of the dough until it rises. So, Israelites, northern Israelites, they had committed what is called spiritual idolatry. They had become spiritually uh, unfaithful. They God and selected them, and God had made them their, is their own, yet they rebelled against God. And slowly by slowly, they continued to turn away from God. They are being compared here by a, a flower, which is prepared and which is baked and cooked in the oven. So their sins were being prepared. Of course, they were preparing themselves their sins. And soon, their sins would mend them to suffer for, for it. As, we, are, as they were, we, we, we know, later on, they were taken to the land of captivity. And their land was destroyed. And they lost their identity. On the day of the festival of our king, the princess became inflamed with wine. And enjoins us with the mockers. So, we see here what the, the leaders were doing. They were involved, they were involved in, in dungeons of the pagan nations. Uh, and this dungeons, they ended up uh, rebelling against God. And even today we see, especially during celebration, or many people, whether they are celebrating birthdays, whether they are celebrating function, in, uh, other functions, we see them indulging in all forms of carnality. In indulging in drinking. And when they indulge in drinking, other sins follow up. Because uh, drink is a mocker. And when people can get drunk, it takes away their sanity. That's why we are told that uh, we should not get drunk with the wine. Rather, we should be drunk with the Holy Spirit. When we are drunk with the Holy Spirit, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, we fulfill the desires of the Holy Spirit, and we reap, we reap a harvest of life and eternal. When we choose to, fruf, to be drunk with wine, that is to entertain our body, which is like a flower, it is fading away very quickly, then we lose ourselves, we lose, the, we lose the life which God has given us. So my prayer to us, especially in, 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 in the current society of the 21st century, where there are so many much dungeons of all form of carnality and paganism. My prayer to us is that we shall choose not to be carnally minded, not to be fleshly minded. Because to be carnally minded, it is death. But to be spiritually minded, it is life eternal. Those who sought to please the, 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 the flesh, they shall reap everlasting separation from God. But those who choose to please the Spirit, because we are a Spirit, then we shall, live, we shall reap life eternal. So may God help you and me that we may choose to walk in the ways of the Lord. Verse 6 says that uh, their art are like an oven. They approach with aim with intrunt. Their passion smolders all night. In the morning, it emblazes like a flaming fire. All of them are out as an oven. They devour their rulers. All their kings fall, and none of them calls on me. So God here is comparing them uh, once again with the oven. That uh, they would just acknowledge God with their mouth, but their heart were far away. So what, what, what had up, happened to them is that uh, they were left with their activities. They were people who are religious. All the religion activities of sacrifices, celebrations, they really remembered all of them. But when it came to personal relationship with God, they forgot all of it. 
They didn't remember what God had instructed them. They didn't remember that God had called them to be separate. They didn't remember that God, the works of God which he had done for them, they forgot the true living God, and they even exchanged the glory of God with the images. And even at times in our society, we forget who God is, and we end up exchanging the glory of God with idols. Idols of fame, idols of materialism, idols of science and technology, idols of drug and substance abuse, and idols of religious activities. And we forget personal relationship with our maker. And as a result now, we lose God's blessings because we choose not to listen to the Lord. So we also forget to call upon the name of the Lord. Especially when God blesses us, a man has a, a tendency of forgetting his maker when God has blessed them. All of them are out as an oven. They devour their rulers, all their kings fall, and none of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes with the nations. Ephraim is a flat cake, not turn over. Foreigners serve his strength, but he does not realize it. His air is sprinkled with gray, but he does not notice. So this is so powerful. This is glorious, even in our society, whereby we see God's people, they contaminated themselves. They conformed to the standards of the neighboring countries. They desired to be like them. They desired a king like other nations. And as a result, now this king, when he came, he oppressed them. He became a snare. This would refer to King Saul, whom and the qualities of the neighboring kings but God had chosen them, and he was their king, he was their leader. At least the time when they, 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 they started admiring the, their neighboring countries, and they wanted a king whom they would see. They wanted a king who, who would lead them in fighting the wars, in fighting their enemies, a physical king. And they didn't see, they didn't get contented with God as their king. How, can, how is this applicable to us now? Now means in our 21st century. This is so applicable whereby at times we turn to the world and we want to emulate them. We want to copy them. We want to be like them. And when we do that, what happens is that uh, since we are at a higher position, the world pull us to, to their level until we reach to the same threshold. And as a result now, they start mistreating us. They are very... People, that is the world system. The world system that we, we, we admire and we think that it is the one which has a solution for our life. When we go to them, when we interact with them, when we copy them, when we imitate them, what happens is that uh, they start now abusing us. They take away our strength. They take away our true identity. They take our God and they substitute our true living God, Almighty God, Yahweh, with their idols. And once they do that, we start now losing our identity. We start losing our true meaning. And we start suffering. We start being exploited by them. Because the enemy has nothing. Actually, he only uh, masquerades himself. He can, he can flange us. In disguises like an angel of truth, but the enemy has nothing. So, although you will pretend, you will act to be owning everything. But once we are in his kingdom, then we realize that we have lost ourselves. We have lost our strength, and we become blinded, and we don't realize. So even right now, as I speak this message, there are so many people who have been um, blinded by the enemy, yet they don't realize that's why I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that God is breaking the yoke, the yoke of captivity, the yoke of sin, the yoke of addiction in any aspect of your life. And God is opening your spiritual eyes so that you may know how you, where you have fallen and you may rise up by faith to God through humility and you may recognize that you need desperately a savior. If there is a time when our society needed a savior, it is now. Because without him, then we are not going to be fruitful. And it is only when we are fruitful that we enjoy God's blessing. So there are so many people today who are unblinded, yet 
they don't realize. There are so many people whose purpose have been substituted by the enemy. And they think their purpose is to exploit others. Their purpose is to abuse drugs. Their purpose is to, is to abuse their, their families. Their purpose is to, to loot the country. Their purpose is to loot the, the institution they have been given to be in charge. My brother, my sister, that is not your purpose. Your purpose is to fulfill God's will for your life. And in God's will it will never be that you exploit others. God's will for you is that you may be in charge of all the resources which God created and you, that you may use those resources to bring the kingdom of God here on earth. Because God desires that the kingdom of God come here on earth. That's why he taught his disciples that when you pray, pray that let your kingdom come. The kingdom of God is supposed to come in the area of your influence. Wherever you are, let the kingdom of God come and God is going to see through. So our brothers didn't realize that they were really being exploited by their enemies. Foreigners serve in strength, but he does not realize it. His air is sprinkled with gray, but he does not notice. Israel, arrogancy, testifies against him. But despite all this, he does not return to the Lord his God or search for him. So, pride is a dangerous thing. Israel, that is the northern kingdom, thought that... Uh, they would erect the images and substitute God's instruction to them. Actually, when their leader by the name Jeroboam, when he, when he led them into erecting these idols, he convinced them and confused them that uh, if they continued obeying God by going to Jerusalem, then they would lose their identity. And as a result now, he showed them the shortcut that they would also worship in the high places. And they erected those idols in the high places who were to represent God, who were to be, to, to be seen on behalf of God. And actually, the motive was good. The motive was that they would worship God. But now, at the same time, the motive was against the will of God. And even today in our society, there are so many people who substitute God with images, with other things, who choose not to follow God's way. Christ is the way. Christ is the truth. Christ is, Christ is the life. And he is the mediator between all men to God the Father. Without passing through Christ, then we cannot assess the Father. Why? God designed it to be that way. But many people think that they can uh, substitute God's agenda, God's direction, God's teaching with their own activities. Realize that when you do that, then you forfeit God's blessing. And rejecting Christ, it is a sign of arrogance or ignorance because you are not required to pay anything. What, what, what is required it is for you to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came for you and for me. He died because of your sin and because of my sin. He was bruised. He was sustained. He was punished because of our iniquities and our transgression. And he bore our sins in his body. And by his stripes we are healed. And of course, he died and he resurrected again. And now you are only justified through faith in Christ alone. Salvation it is through faith in Christ alone. When we hear the word of God and we accept it. But for those who reject him, it is a sign of arrogance because it is a gift. And when they do that, they despise the gift of God. And once you despise the gift of God, then there is no error which can be found just at, as it happened to our brothers, Israelites, who didn't search for God, who didn't return to the Lord, regardless of God informing them the need for them to return. We move on. Verse 11 says that uh, Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless, now calling to Egypt, now turning to Assyria. 
So what happened after Israelite, that is the northern kingdom, rejected uh, the true living God, what happened to them is that uh, they moved from one country for Europe to another. And whenever they intermingled, whenever they made alliances with these countries, expecting them to help them, expecting them to fight for them, expecting them to be a refuge for them, expecting them to be a son for them, these countries turned out to be a snare to them. And they exploited them. And they made them even run away more and more from the Lord. So they, were, they, are, they are compared by, with the negative uh, trait of Wandaf. That of being easily deceived. Being naive. And Dav can easily be entangled, can easily be trapped. So they became like as senseless as Dav and as easily deceived as the Dav. Actually, even to you and me, once we fail to acknowledge the true living God, once we fail to recognize the way of God, which is not difficult, then just hearing the word of God and having faith in God, and believing in whom we sent, when we fail to, to recognize that simple gift which God has given us, what happens is that we find ourselves wandering. We become, wander, we become wanderers. We move from this source of error to another. We run from this job to another, from this partner to another, from this business to another, from this uh, kind of addiction to another, thinking that they will satisfy us. The truth is, nothing else will satisfy your soul. Your soul was created by God so that God himself can satisfy it. Without that, we become wanderers. We keep on moving from this congregation to another, from this relationship to another, from this activity to another. Because we are confused, we don't know what to do. But once, once we recognize our Savior, he shows us the way. And we live a fulfilling life. My prayer to us is, God will help us. That none of us will be senseless. None of us will go to seek help from other people. Egypt refers to the world. When, we talk of, when the Bible talks of Egypt, it refers to as the world system. And the life of the Egypt, it is always a downfall life. Verse 13 it says, When I hear them flocking together, I will cut them. Let me start verse 12. When they go, I will throw my net over them. I will pull them down like bands of the hair. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. So, life without God, the error which you run to will always frustrate you. Anything which you think can substitute God, the true living God, we will never substitute him. What happens is that thing become frustrating to the person who goes to them. There are people who think also the powers of the darkness can protect them, can protect their families, can protect their marriages, can protect their, their businesses, can protect their possession in authority. And they go to them. They go to worship the creation rather than the creator. Just like what happened to our brother's northern kingdom of Israel is that uh, those things which are not of God, they become as near to you. And they, they start tormenting you. So may God hear us that we may know that we are only complete in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Verse 13 says, Hold to them, because they have strained from me, destruction to them, because they have rebelled against me. I, so, when we leave God, of, of course there is one thing which is certain, which will happen is that uh, we are now without security. We are now vulnerable. We are now naked. There is no security. And the enemy attack us. And life without God, enemy will exploit us. Enemy will substitute our life. But they thank God, because Christ came to give us the substitution. That which the enemy had lost, Christ bought it back for you and for me. All what you need to do is to reconnect yourself to your maker through faith in him. So that even when destruction comes, 
to the wicked, then you will be safe. Under God's wing, you are safe. Actually, you only see, you only observe with your eyes the destruction that falls to the wicked. When you make the most high your dwelling place, you will dwell in safety, you will dwell in security. When you make you the most high your dwelling place, this is done through faith in the Son of God. And when you do that, you are assured security 24 7. And nothing by any means will ever harm you. Without him, then destruction is coming upon you. But it is God's will for you and me that we may be redeemed. Many as we see here, I long to redeem them. I long to redeem them. So God longs, longs to, de- to, to redeem his people, Israelites. Redemption has to do with paying back. Redemption has to do with paying the price so that you can repossess, so that you can regain that thing which or in the you end, but you are lost. So to the Israelites, they had lost their maker. They had lost God. God had chosen them, but they chose to, to leave him. They chose to abandon him. And when they abandoned him, then God had to keep his word, which he had given them. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verses 15, there are those curses which God had promised them that if they rebel, then they would form before them. So when they rebelled against God, they lost God's blessings. And God here is longing to redeem them. But they were not willing to listen. And even today, this one redemption. That is what Christ did. Christ came to pay us back. Christ came to restore us back to our original rightful position. And through the blood of Jesus, he has redeemed all humanity. The penalty, the price of our sins has been paid. What is the penalty? What is the price? There's the wages of sin is death. So you and me, we were born dead. Dead here means separated with our maker. Because of the endemic sins, every person is born dead. Dead means he is separated from God by the rebellion which they had committed. But now, God, out of his own mercy, out of his own love, out of his own supremacy and sovereignty, has paid the price. And all what is needed for you and for me, it is to acknowledge this price which has been, been paid for us. And once we acknowledge it, that is by believing that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior, of our life and we confess him in our heart we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we ask for the forgiveness of sins then the requirement of our death is paid that is the meaning of redemption and we are redeemed by the blood of the lamp so if you are there and there is something which has been disturbing you over the years Maybe it is sins of your great, great grandparent, And many people, many false prophets have even uh, misused your resources, telling you that if you do MBCD, if you do this sacrifice, if you do this activity, then it will be taken away. All those ones are liars. There is no sacrifice apart from the blood of Jesus which can take away the curse. Because Christ became a curse for you and me. So that through him we may become the, the blessing of the Lord. So it is only in Christ Jesus. It is only in the blood of the, of the lamp which was slain for many. Before the foundation of the earth were established. That the curse of the law is taken away. And the power of the law is taken away. And we are able actually even to obey God. Because once we acknowledge Christ Jesus. He give us the, the Europa. Who is the Holy Spirit. The spirit of comfort, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of mighty, the spirit of power, the spirit of fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom rest upon us once we acknowledge Jesus Christ. And that is the spirit now which helps God's people to do God's will. But on your own, you will find yourself falling from this 
and action to another from this activity to another and being frustrated. But God's will for you and me is that he may redeem us and he has already paid the price. They do not cry out to me from their heart, but will upon their bands. They gather together for grain and new wine, but turn away from me. So to the Israelites, they lacked personal relationship with God. They lacked genuineness with God. They lacked absolute truth with their maker. And they continued acting. They continued wearing the costume. And they thought that God was like them. They forgot that God sees. And this is very, 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 very seen even in our society whereby many times we forget that God is not like us. That God can never lie. That God is seeing whatever is happening. And we start uh, rebelling against him. And failing to turn to him. So right now God is calling our society, our community, our families to, to turn to him in humility. Israelites, they had been left with only a form of godliness. There was no intercourse between them and their maker. There was no knowledge which they had with their maker. And consequently now, we see them being changed through this prophet of God. I trained them and strengthened them, but they plot evil against me. So God had blessed them, he had given them rest, he had given them peace, he had delivered them from the land of captivity, he had given them favor, he had fought for them. He had enabled even their enemies to run away from them, even when there was nobody who was chasing them. And God had given them the victory over many years. And yet, out of these blessings, they rejected the Lord. So even when God blesses his people, there is that tendency of God's people forgetting the Lord, their God. So may God help us, that even as God continues to strengthen us, as God continues to empower us, as God continues to show us the way, as God continues to make us the salt of the world, as God continues to make us the light of the world, that by the Holy Spirit of God, we shall never forget the Lord, our God. We shall never say anything against our maker, because God is always good, that we will not, not plot evil against our maker. Because even when we do that, we can only be assured that the, the, the plot which we make against our maker will always fail. Verse 16, they do not turn to the most high. They are like a fountain bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword because of their insolent ones. For this, they will be ridiculed in the land of Egypt. So this was a final verdict to these people. Since they rejected the Lord, God had to keep his word. And what happened is that a time came when the Assyrian came and they destroyed them. And they were taken into captivity. And they suffered. They lost their identity. They lost their life. They, they lost their sovereignty. They lost their land which God had given them. And that is what happens also to any person who fails to acknowledge God. Once God has given you the message like this, and you have known the truth, that Christ is the way, that Christ is life, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, and that God did not send his son Jesus to condemn the world, but to give it life, so that whoever believes in Jesus Christ may not be condemned, may not perish, but have everlasting life. So once you, are, you hear the message like this, if you believe in it, then God comes in and restores you. If you reject it, then God gives his want, and God is just. We end up being ridiculed, we end up failing, we end up suffering because of rejecting the Lord. So it is a dangerous thing to reject the Lord, our God. Today's want is teaching us from our brother's Israelite that when we hear the word of the, of the Lord, we should never make our heart to be handed. We should never harden our heart. When we hear the word of God, we are called upon to receive it with thanksgiving and to acknowledge it. So today we have looked at Hosea chapter 7, verses 1 to 16, and we have seen Israelite, northern kingdom of Israelite, failing to obey God, failing to acknowledge God, sorting other devices outside God, and consequently we end up frustrating them. And we have seen that even in our society, it is similar in many instances and many ways, whereby we like the shortcut, where we fail to understand that the shortcut 
way to fail is the shortcut. And we think that our shortcut will help us. So may God help us that we may follow him, we may obey him, we may acknowledge the majesty and the sovereignty of who he is, and we may live in him to glorify him and to honor him all the days of our life. This will happen by the grace of God. So God bless you and keep you even for listening to this word. My prayer to you is that God will help our society, that we are going to turn to God in humility, in the name of Jesus Christ. So you are blessed of the Lord. Thanks so much for being part of this project of learning the truth, the truth which is found in the word of God. God bless you and keep you. If this message has ministered to you, kindly consider subscribing, consider also sharing it to your friends, and also consider tuning on that notification bell so that whenever I upload new video in this channel, you will be the first to learn with us. God be with you as you continue embracing obedience, which is better than sacrifice in Jesus' name.